Hey everybody, this is Agent Smith, and we are playing Fallout 1. This is episode 8. Yeah, definitely episode 8. So in this one, it's a little bit story, but this is more of a trick that I have found that, that typically works, and I'm hoping it's still in this generation or this version of the game. It should work. It should work for you and everyone else. This is a way to get rich really quick in a town that you can buy everything that you'll ever need to improve yourself so within this town is libraries full of every book and skill that there is in the game uh, there's casinos there are places to buy any of the weapons that you could possibly need and deck yourself out completely now the reason i came in as a gambler is simply for the fact that coming here there's a trick that can be exploited that can basically guarantee that in a matter of a few minutes you will end up with thousands and thousands tens of thousands of caps in almost no time at all so in this video I'll be showing you how to do that and we'll be getting ourselves to a point of near impossible to fail at this with our skills being all maxed out to the near 100 whatever books can get us to around 91 91 91 to 99 percent um, and then whatever skills we get after that are just truly increasing that beyond that point to where we're perfectionist with all the weapons so we'll get into this so let's head on into the hub and in this case we're not going to go through all of the steps that we would normally go through speaking to every single person and learning everything about all the people here this is an extremely large city uh, I could literally dedicate three or four videos alone to this place I mean it's just it's it's like going to Diamond City and trying to learn everybody's names it's like you know uh, Fallout 3 going into uh, the massiveness that is the the aircraft carrier um, town. I mean, you know, you, you never learned every single place in there. And if you did, good for you, but man, oh man, <laughs> it's a lot to do. So, this is Deputy Fry. Hello, friend. Deputy Tony Fry to service. What is this place? Oh, a newcomer. Welcome to the hub. You've reached the biggest city in the coast. Heck, maybe the biggest city in the world, for all I know. I thought you were part of the caravan. Did you come in with them? Uh, no. That's surprising. It's been pretty rough out there, especially with the missing caravans, but safe now. Just stay away from the Maltese Falcon. <laughs> That's exactly where I gotta go. There are a bunch of troublemakers, Decker and his crew. Who's Decker? He, um, he owns the Maltese Falcon in a merchant's market, but I, I wouldn't associate with him. Uh, if you want to stay out of the trouble, you know, he, he's nothing but a murderous animal. But the sheriff won't let you, uh, won't let me arrest him without proof. Huh. I don't want to play on your sting. I just want the money. Do you know where I could find a water chip? My vault's chips malfunction and we need another immediately. Water chip? <laughs> well, I've never heard of one, but uh, if it had something to do with water, then though, you should uh, talk to the water merchants. They're, his headquarters are located further south, just past the downtown area. Uh, thanks. No problem. Believe it or not, our city quite, is quite safe, and our police are all very highly trained peacekeepers. You shouldn't have any problems. Just avoid the Maltese Falcon. Uh, I will not go directly there, actually. Thank you. So, and you get things to look at through here. I mean, there's just buildings from buildings to go through. Every business has its own deal. You can get into fights with every sign of type of person. I should probably put my gun away because I don't want to do that anywhere around here. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting about the don't get shot. The Crimson Caravan. I think, if I remember correctly, Crimson Caravan is actually mentioned, even if they're existing, actually, within the world of the... Uh, New Vegas. Uh, I mean, the caravan systems in general are just huge in California. 
uh, they didn't utilize them in uh, in the Fallout 3 uh, and Fallout 4, and their excuse being that it's just not something they were into, so, it's, you know, it's like, whatever. This neon sign reads the Maltese Falcon, and that, that, sirs, and ma'ams, is our destination. We are going to get ourselves some rich. Ah, now the Maltese Falcon. The place to be. Good music, good drinks, and good company. Always getting narrated. Every time we go somewhere, Ian's got a little bit to say. Go ahead and save over my files. And we will now go to the dealer, whichever one. See, a very upset gambler and a roulette dealer. So, we come in here with our caps and we speak to the roulette dealer. And essentially, the trick to this is you can do this with as little as 100 caps, but basically what you're going to do is either jam them down or hold them down. One, The button's number one and number four on your keyboard. You're gonna do this for about 10 minutes and you just hold on. And that trick, winner or triple your money, if you wanna play again, one, four, one, four. So, one and four. And you just keep on doing that. You can see the money racking up there in the corner. In the center of the screen, it's showing 5,000 caps, 6,000. We've got 7,000 caps. My luck is just making this much easier for me. So I get a lot more wins than losses in these situations. I mean, you're going up and down, but you're going to get more wins in the long run. As long as you are a gambler, you can do this. We do this for a few seconds. As you can see, I'm already at 10,000 caps. So, I'm going to do this for the next uh, 10 minutes or so and get myself going. And uh, we'll get back to you. Three hours later. So, as you can see, I've gone from the couple of thousand that I had originally when I came in into over 96,000. I'm about to reach about 100,000 caps and I'm going to stop off there. Then we can move on forward and do the things we need to do to uh, keep going with all of this. Now... I must say, why wouldn't you just simply go here immediately and get all the money that you need? But unfortunately, that's not the best idea in that world because you want to, you know, make sure that you've got the things that you need to survive in the world. You can't just simply go straight here and skill yourself up. Uh, you're going to want to have at least 50% and it takes a lot longer to do it then. I mean, you can go away and just get into the million dollars marks. You can see it just keeps on going. So, But what we're going to do now is um, move on up. Uh, or excuse me, move on down to the, um, or over, or whichever direction you want to refer to it as. We're going to go over to the library. Okay, so in the same section of this town, uh, there's a library. You can buy all the books that you're going to need uh, to uh, basically raise all of the skills, any of the skills that you want. You should be able to max them all out with this kind of money. So, And if for some reason you don't have any more money, you can always just come back because all you need is about $100 to make this happen. It's almost impossible to not pass through i mean worst case scenario you start off with the five cap payments or bets and work your way up from there with the one and four right now i'm actually taking a saying okay for another bet and saying 50 and since there's only two options on the second one i never accidentally it understands what's it's, what it's doing here so all right so ending all the bets and checking my inventory and i have what this state says is more caps than I could even carry. 99,999 caps. So once you've reached that point, you got to stop anyway. I mean, 30,000, 40,000 is probably all you really need. But once you get once you get to 100,000 caps, there's really no point in going any further. But, you know, it's fun. Plus, I was talking to you guys for a minute there. So somewhere around here, if I can remember correctly, there's a library in this place or a place where you can buy a, a lot of books. I just got to recall where that was located. Once we can find that, we are good to go. 
police officers. They might be able to help. Okay, but we're not. Move along. <laughs> kind. Gonna have to read all the sides as we go around. Fargo Traders. There's the police station. We got a gun store. Bulletin board's a nice place where you can find a lot of missions and stuff and information about things to do when you want to go and expand. But again, I'm trying to push through this as a bit of a more of a story run so you guys can get an idea of what's out there to do. Uh, maybe this one. Let's go into this building. Looks like they got a lot of racks. There we go. Staple this is Stapleton the librarian. Hi, welcome to the library. I don't think I have seen you around these parts before. What might you be looking for in the way of knowledge? What do you have in the way of books? Well, let me show you my selection. She has guns for books. <laughs> so you look through each one of them. We got the books of science. So you're just going to buy all of the science books. We are, oh, geez, Louise. You're going to buy all of the Dean's Electronics books. Gonna buy all of the first aid books, all the outdoorsman books, just every single thing that they've got in here available, and that's what she has on her. She's about forty thousand caps just for that. And of course, I've still got stuff that I can trade, so I don't necessarily have to use money on all of this situation. This is part of the reason why it doesn't really matter. I can carry what I need to carry, but like I keep uh, I keep this just in case I ever get poisoned. You know, iguanas on a stick is an iguana stand just down south of here. I always feel like I'm gonna need a time bomb at some point soon. I'll be well enough to actually throw these grenades. So, drop some spears. I can have another gun. I don't care about this Bla Blamco mac and cheese. We could take this 44, this, uh, what is it, ball, 9 millimeter ball. I'm pretty sure this sack is just a sack, which is worth something. I wonder if that increases my inventory. Might actually keep that. Ah, screw it. Uh, we could take this lighter, a couple of empty bottles, another leather outfit. I don't need all of that. All right, now I'll trade you back that difference with the amount of caps needed. So it looks like I need 38, I believe. So we will give 999 caps. Done. And you gotta keep going similar to this. I can think I could maybe do three thousand. Nope, doesn't look like that. Yep, nine nine nine. Done. We just keep doing this. I mean, it's a bit of a hassle, but this is how you got to trade your stuff over. You can't just give her all of it. But you get what you need this way. Oops. Got to raise that nine nine nine. Finally, finally cutting into my number. All 
I don't think this uh, game ever expected anyone to ever do trades like this this big, but I also didn't think that they... I don't know. A lot of old school RPGs have glitches like that. There's ones that you can find in Morrowind, for instance, that will make your character essentially a god. So, with uh, tying magic spells directly to your body or the armor that you're wearing, you can make yourself run faster than anything and jump entire areas. The spell in that game that you receive right off the bat... Uh, you find from a man who falls from the sky would normally kill you but if you use the right spell combinations in Morrowind you're able to um, essentially make yourself uh, I think that's about right you're able to make yourself your legs strong enough to be able to survive the jump let's take 500 back now let's give her the difference is uh, 13. No, not 23. I don't want to give her a tip. <laughs> 13. So that should be a trade. And there we go. And that takes all of that from her. You can take her ammunition and anything else that you need if necessary. Uh, any other stuff that you find of value. But honestly, you can also take a look at the bookshelves. I do believe that you can find more stuff to purchase by going onto the bookshelves in the first place. So it's been a while since I've merchant merchanted places before so but uh no i guess not yeah i'm just there for looks all right so then you go through and you read all your books all of them no i don't want to move them cancel i want to read there we go Also bringing the weight down for me. So then you can see in your character sheet from all of that science reading, I should that should have increased. Uh, what was it increasing? Big book of science. Read the book. You learn new science information, and so my science skill has increased to sixty-nine percent, which I had a much lower for it. So we'll go through and do the same for all of them and see what stats we end up with as much as we can here. This kind of money, you can pretty much go around to anyone that you ever find within the game and just purchase whatever it is you need. We're also going to find ourselves a decent sniper rifle, which is as much ammunition as we can get. And then we're going to also get a good automatic or combat shotgun for Tycho, because that's the best weapon for him. And a 44 with as much ammunition as we can get as well for Ian. Because he'll do his quite well with that. So with that combination and with our armor up like this. Um, and our soon to be necessity of perks set in toughness. We will be able to survive the stupidity of Ian shoot us in the back. And be able to snipe just about anything anywhere with the way our skills are already with small guns. And now guns and bullets. Which actually, that one we doesn't do us any good. I forgot. I already got my skill up high enough for that. So that was kind of a waste. But, you know. We'll wait out this time until noon. So we don't get in trouble for standing around in our store. And then you talk to her again. Ask her about what she's got in the way of books. If you scroll through her stuff, she has more books. So now we know that we don't need guns and bullets. In fact, we're going to give her the ones we have. Only because I maxed myself out at 120, not maxed out, but raised myself quite high. So. Take all of the outdoorsman books, all of the first aid books, all of Dean's electronics again. And all of the science books. And I will repeat this process for a bit 
and I'll see you guys shortly. One eternity later. Okay, everybody. So now that I've read through that stack of books and gone through that everything, um, you know, as you can see, my stats. I've got a repair with seventy-five percent, eighty percent in science. Uh, that increased me eighty-one percent in first aid. Increased me to seventy percent in outdoorsman. And again, the only reason why I wasn't able to increase my skill with the guns and ammo book was the small gun skill I already have as 120 was already up there. But and the only reason why I didn't wait till coming here to do that was because I would not have been able to survive through the storyline or even random encounters that could have possibly happened between now and then. Plus, it gives you some of the caps because you really start with nothing and you have nothing to sell unless you earn it up. So you got to do what you got to do, right? All right, so now... We are going to, I'm going to go ahead and accept this as good enough because I'm, I'm fine now. And uh, we will get on out of here and head to the, um, oh, excuse me. Uh, excuse me, we're going to go ahead down to Old Town, which I do believe is left of here. I think it was. Bring up, oh, it's right, I can't look at the full map. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> I think it is though, yeah. So we're gonna head down to the southern part of this map. Bum roaming on the street, shifty looking character. All right, I don't care about that place. Come on now. There we go. Keep on moving. Police on every corner should be the safest town ever. After sundown, nobody's allowed in this area. The other guards won't even give you a warning. If they catch you, they'll attack. You better get back to downtown while your head is still attached to your neck. Oh, sorry about that. I'll be on my way. My mistake. Alright, let me uh, just get on back over here. And wait until morning. Or, yeah. Six hours, give it another three. And the part of the reason I'm coming through here and doing all this too is you don't actually need to stop in the hub. Uh, the hub is almost a distraction. There is an opportunity to get a kind of a delay as I stated before. You speak to the water merchants, maybe do a couple of missions for them, and you can get yourself a delay on the time that it would take for your people. I think you get an extra 100 days or so to be able to resolve the situation but uh, this place is so much to do and so time consuming and all of the plus, all of the stuff that you find in this area and missions to do will actually eat up all of your days so it's actually best to avoid the hub except for in the instance of utilizing this um, workaround I guess you can call it so in this town or in this part of old town um, there should be a weapons dealer area that we can find that can get us everything else that we need. Just trying to remember which store it was. It's not a very big section of map, so not too hard to figure out. Okay, I guess I'm not going in there, jeez. Can I help you? Yeah. Uh, an appointment with Mr. Hightower. I'm running very late. Oh man, are you in trouble? Mr. H hates it when he has an appointment or late. I let him chew on you and himself. Go on in. Hmm. Well, I hope it's the gun runner I need. I'm just going to save this before I make sure I don't end up starting something I don't really want to do here. Can everybody, like, not stand in my way? Holy crap. What's your business here? I must speak with Mr. Hightower. 
Okay. But I'm watching you. He's in his office. Thank you. Been down here. Yeah. It's hard to tell I was not taking any visitors and then leave. I really need to speak to Miss Hightower. Okay, but I'm watching you. Okay, can I, can I go and talk to him then? Who are you, and who let you in? Uh, my name is Agent Smith. Leon let me in. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Agent Smith. Now my assistant Leon will see you out the door, out of my home. Okay. Not the person I was looking for. Supposed to be a gun runner merchant here. It seems like this place is only. I feel like I got the wrong section of town. It's been a while. I do believe I do. I think I want to go east. <laughs> I think I forgot the difference between east and west. I know all the southern parts are water. It's where I typically go when I play this, but again, as I stated, I just don't have the interest. I don't want to. I want to actually push through this and get past all of these slowdown points in the storyline and actually get to the goods or the uh, the main story for you guys. It's a walkthrough. I mean, you can. Fiddle with every side quest you wish to do in here, but I I am not. Nope. It doesn't look like a business. Jake's weapons. Yep, there we go. Jacob's the arm dealer. Arms dealer. Hi. Welcome to Jake's. I've got some great merchandise in stock. Feel free to look around. Oh, we'd like to make a deal with you. Here's what I've got. So then we will do the same. So I would think that metal armor is going to be the way to go. But actually the combat armor I have on is actually pretty decent by itself. Flamers. Hunting rifles, submachine guns, grenades, pulse grenades, rocket launchers, assault rifles, more metal armor, leather armor, that's what I'm wearing. Combat armor is what I need. Badoom. 15,000, good lord. I need uh, one sniper rifle. Just one. Six of six shots, a two, two, three, full metal jacket ammo. Geiger counter. Just in case. Gotta find me some two, two, three ammo. There we go. I'll take all of it. Killer shotgun. Got a combat shotgun. And an Eagle 44. Just one. And then I need all of the ammunition. I think I have enough for this. 46, 4659. So far, yeah, I got 60,000, that should be good. And I need all the 44 ammo. If there is any, there we go, 44 magnum ammo. 
And whatever else I have, you can take too. Now, obviously, I'm not using 10 millimeter ammo anymore. So I need my 10 millimeter ammo. So I can drop these in here. Keep my BB gun because I figured that's, I consider that to be the ultimate weapon. <laughs> I always thought it was anyway. So you want to make sure you keep that. You guys will find out later, hopefully, in here. The ultimate weapon, I'm pretty sure, is the Red Rider, if I remember correctly. So now I just got to go through the steps on this to give them the money they need for this. And I will see you guys momentarily. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Now we have all of the weapons there after dropping about 40,000 that we need on that. We will go ahead and equip my new armor. Puts me in what they consider some of the best armor in the game. Got my sniper rifle going on. Now we just need to speak to As this thing says, steal from <laughs> my own people. Hey, buddy. I will give him. He's already wearing that armor. He's going to get my shotgun. Oh. I'll go into what he already has and give him a combat shotgun. Now the best weapon you have the next time we're in combat. There you go. Pulled it out now. And then barter with him. With Ian. And give him everything I have for a 44. It's my full metal jacket rounds. I believe that's my 44 rounds. If I have more of these, those are the full metal jackets. There we go. Let me get a, each piece of hollow points, jacketed hollow points. Like I can speak, I can read abbreviations. I got myself a radioactive radiation scanner. I think that actually will help out. I don't know if it's a motion scanning thing or if it's just a Geiger counter for myself, but either way, that can, that has to come in handy in some level. All right. I offer this to you for jack squat. And then talk. And draw your best weapon, and the next time we are in combat, you should put that out now. Alright, now we'll head back over to the other side of town and talk to the guy. There's a man in a convenience store. And pick up ourselves some med kits and some life packs, things like that. Or some uh, med kits, should I say, and some uh, stim packs. And all the other kind of things that you would need with the remaining fun. With the remaining funds. Like to buy something. Great. Here's what I have. Dwarves in this world. Midgets or whatever you want to call them. So we got 27. We'll take all of your stim packs. They're cheap. I don't need drugs. This is the motion sensor. I'll take your extra books. He's got Psycho, Super Stim Packs. Rope. Toolkit. Radio. Rataway. away probably a good idea. And then give him the 
same treatment. This will take considerably less time, so. But yeah, so I mean, some may consider this cheating, and again, I will disclaimer this video. Uh, this will be labeled in a way, I mean, this will have been labeled in a way that lets you know. Um, you know so this is not something you're forced to do. This is an interesting little trick that's in the game that most people don't know about or think about. So uh, a lot of people are like, why would you waste your time with a gambling skill? I'm like, well, money is no object when you're rich, so. Offer. Good enough. Got a $100 tip, midget. Midget man. <laughs> dwarf. We live in a world where magic and dwarves and everything else exist. <laughs> Actually reminds me this this company actually um, this group of people actually made another game uh, called uh, uh, Arcanum of Magica Obscura and that I tell you is one of the most fun RPGs similarly done to this I mean the look and style the graphics are somewhat improved but you're playing in a world where it's like technology has cusped and become a thing. Uh, due to dwarves essentially uh, kind of bringing technology to humans and um, elves and other things in the world who are built of magic are just not doing as well with it because whenever whenever magic and technology get near one another it's an explosive result so like for instance there's trains in the game this world of magic and swords and stuff and alchemy as well uh, but on the train if you want to get a ride from um one place to uh, to the next and you are a magic user in the game they actually give you only a ticket to ride in the caboose the furthest location from the train which is still a risk and the ticket price is ridiculously high because it is a danger to everyone else on the train uh, since your magic could cause the technology the engine to just explode just randomly so it's interesting so we're back out onto the main map, and from here, where I intended to definitely go was out to the Boneyard of Necropolis. So, um, Necropolis is where we want to head next. I do believe that would be the Boneyard, because that would be the closest location to it, anyway. We'll get ourselves some encounters and show some badassery. Uh oh. Never have to worry about anyone again. It's forty four. Shot his own guy right in the back of the head. So now I can take aim shots, but I can only take one step once I do. Shooting the grind. And there you go. Check their bodies and see if they got any money. All the guns that you find in the world will definitely be able to unload um, ammunition from them. Whatever my mouse likes to, so. <laughs> you can always check and see what people have available on them. Most of the time, they're going to have generic weapons. So you don't waste your time getting stuff that you don't need. But, nothing wrong with pulling yourself some extra ammunition for your partners he's got a hunting rifle I believe both of these guys oh man that's the one I unloaded alright so head on and continue on to the boneyard yeah I want to say the boneyard is uh, like an entrance way into the necropolis um if I remember correctly. And if not, well, I'll backtrack myself to the next location that it should be. Uh, but this is Los Angeles, essentially. 
and uh, obviously one of the worst hit places. You can see the whole city line. Like we've been in the high desert the entire time. So, yep, Los Angeles. So we are here at the Aditum. Uh, this is the first play location given to us uh, from the singer that we talk, spoke to. And I will go ahead and leave this video here. And again, like I said, this is not something that you have to do. Honestly, if you feel that you want to go to the hub and do some major exploration and go and check every single thing that you want to see, that's fine. We will be coming back there uh, further down in the storyline because it's going to be needed um, just naturally within, the, within this game. Uh, I just choose to go here, like I said early on, because you can make a lot of money right off the bat before you step on to one of the more combat-intensive areas of this game. Um, but we are getting close to halfway there when it rec in regards to um, in regards to um, getting the water chip, and, and well, the, we're almost there to the water chip, which getting it back is more like a halfway point type situation so anyhow um i'll go ahead and end this video here um don't forget to like comment and subscribe uh, you can also reach me on twitter at agent smith retro and i'll see you guys in the next video have a good day